Hello, and in this video, I'm just going to show you about changing file permissions in the Linux terminal. So, to start off with, let's just ls, and you'll see I have a file here called ono.txt. So, let's just use our nano command to try and edit this. And you'll see, we're allowed to edit it, but at the bottom here, it says warning, no write permissions. So, if we try and write to it, let's try and write hello and just write that, it says, error, permission was denied. Now this is because the file permissions don't allow us to do this. So if I just clear, if I now do ls-l, you'll see, oh no, oh no .txt, and all the way over to the left here, it says, hyphen r, hyphen hyphen r, hyphen hyphen r, hyphen hyphen. Now what this actually represents is the files file permissions. Now the Excluding the first hyphen, just ignore that, we have three chunks of three. So we have r hyphen hyphen, that's the first chunk, then another r hyphen hyphen, that's the second chunk, then another r hyphen hyphen, that is the third chunk. Now the first chunk is for the user, the second chunk is for the group, and the third chunk is for other. So, for example, the user for this file, as it says in ls hyphen l, is joe, the group for this file, uh, I believe the group, I believe the group is also Joe, perhaps, I'm, I don't know a whole lot about groups, I'm, I'm pretty sure the group is also Joe, and, and then other is just anyone else, so, for example, Joe, which is me, because I'm the user of the file, I get the permissions in the first chunk, Plus, because I'm in the group Joe, I also get the permissions in the second chunk. And then everyone else, and I think I'll get these as well, get the permissions in the third chunk. So, all I'm going to do to change permissions is, I'm going to use sudo, because it's going to need administration privileges. And then we're going to use chmod. And basically this stands for change modification. So I think of this as change the modification settings of the file. So who can modify it, who can execute it, who can read it, etc. So sudo chmod, and then you do the permissions. Now there are a variety of ways to do this. So the first way I'm going to show you is we use u to represent the user, g to represent the group, and o to represent the other. So let's just clear and there we go. So, sudo chmod, and we're going to go user, and we're going to add permissions to the user to be able to write and execute. So all we're doing is we're saying add the permission to the user, that's why we have the add sign, of write and execute, hence w and x. Because I'm not sure if I've already said it, but the first r in the sequence is for read, the second letter in the sequence sequence is W, which is for write, and the third letter in the sequence is X, which is for execute. So all I'm doing is I'm adding write and execute permissions to the user. And the user already has read permissions, so this should give me all the permissions. And our last thing we have to give to it is the file itself, so ono.txt. So there we go, let's ls L to check if that's changed. And it has, you can see I now have read, write, and execute permissions. Group still has read permissions only, and other still has read permissions only. So, let's change some more things. So, we're going to just chmod, and we're going to change it so I don't have execute permissions. So, we're going to go, in fact, let's, let's not change me, let's change the group. So, let's give everyone full permissions first of all and then we can start removing some. So we can say G plus RWX comma O plus RWX or we can say G O plus RWX or what we can say is we can say G O equals RWX which actually just sets it to those rather than adding or subtracting from the current permissions. So that's what I'm going to do and ono.txt and ls l oh look you now see everyone has full permissions for read write and execute but now I've decided I changed my mind and I want people in other to only have read and execute so I'm going to go chmod 
other minus, so we can use minus to take away permissions, so other minus execute, and then we give our file name, oh no dot txt. So we ls hyphen l, and um, well would you look at that, I don't think that's what I meant to do, because I kind of forgot what I was doing halfway through, so let's quickly do what I meant to do, I think, which was to only give them execute permissions. Oops, and I forgot to pass in the file name. And there we go, they now have only execute permissions. So before, I minus their execute permissions, but I wasn't thinking straight, that's not what I wanted to do. Even though that worked perfectly fine for what I told it to do, so I've just set it equal to execute permissions, and now other users only have execute permissions. So let's clear. And we can give this multiple things, so let's say, let's type L again, and let's just ch mod, and let's say we want the user to have read and write permissions, and then we want the group to have um, read and execute, and we want other to also have read and execute. We would do something like this, so we can say u equals read write, comma, group and other equals read execute and then obviously we just pass in our file name and we can ls hyphen l and you can see those changes so there is also another way of doing this which is the last one I'm going to go over for the time being and we can go ch mod and we can actually do it in numbers now the read permission is number four this will make sense in a minute the read permission is four the write permission is two and the execute permission is 1. So what we actually do is we give it three numbers and it goes in the order of user, group, other. So for example if we wanted the permission of being able to read and execute we add our read number to our execute number so that makes 5. So let's say we want the user to be able to read and execute we'll give it 5 for our first number. We want the group to be able to just read, we give it 4 for our second number, and we want other to be able to just execute, we would give it 1 for our last number. So let's just let's specify our file name, ls hyphen l, and you can see that's done exactly what we wanted to do. I believe, yeah, it has. Good. So let's just clear that, and the numbers are really useful, and along the web you'll usually see people using chmod 777 and then a file which gives full permissions to everyone, because obviously 4 add 2 add 1 is 7. So that's chmod, and it is so unbelievably useful. What have I left this as? Let's just quickly change this back to a 777. So chmod, very, very useful, and you're going to use it a lot in file permissions. And I forgot to mention this, so before I move on from chmod, I'm going to create a folder called folder. We're going to cd into folder, and let's just create a file in here called, think of a name, let's call the file hello. Now you'll see if we ls hyphen l, hello has the properties of read and write for the user, read for the, um, the other one, the group, and read for other. So let's say we want to set everything in folder to have these. Well, what we can do is if we see the dot dot slash to go up a directory, we can go and we can change the properties of folder itself. So reading, writing, and executing, well, technically speaking, the folder, or we can change folder and everything inside it. Now, what we do is we pass it the recursive parameter, so that's hyphen capital R to make it do everything inside it. So we can go chmod um, 777 folder um, in fact I should probably put hyphen r back here. I'm not really sure, sure of the um, proper place of putting the parameters. I guess let's try putting it at the end. I think that seems the most sensible place. So ls hyphen l will now see that the folder itself has the read, write and execute and if we cd into folder we'll see just clear we'll see that this hello file also has the read write and execute for everyone because we set recursive everything inside the directory so that is extremely useful and let's just move on from chmod and let's go on to 
ch own. So as we have spoken about, if we ls hyphen l, ono.txt has the owner of Joe and the group of Joe. So let's say you want to change the owner of the file. I don't want Joe to be the owner, I want someone else to be the owner. Now I'm not sure how this is, in fact I know what we can do. So let's go ch own, then we specify our new owner. So let's say we want root to be the owner. And then we specify our file. So, aha, uh -huh, the operation is not permitted, so let's just add a sudo in front of there. And, oh, well, will you look at that? Root is now the owner of the file. So, ch own changes the owner of a file, and again, we can pass it that recursive parameter to do everything inside a folder, and we can do it to folders as well. So we can say ch own um, root folder. And again, we're going to need to use sudo. And there we go, you'll see that's now owned by root as well. Let's just change those both back. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to go and set recursively everything in my Joe directory to be owned by me. So go ch own Joe. In fact, we'll probably need a sudo for this. Sudo ch own Joe. Uh, Joe, because that's the folder name, uh, hyphen R. So we can now ls hyphen L, you'll see Joe itself. Again, it's owned by me. We can cd into Joe and ls hyphen L. Oh, I did that wrong. And we'll see, this is now all owned by me again. So ch own changes the owner, ch mod changes the different modification settings of the read, the write, and the execute. And the last file permissions command we're going to go over is chgrp, or chgroup. And as you may have guessed, this just changed the group of a file. So let's just say we want to change the group of ono.txt again. We can go chgrp, and then we specify our group. So let's just use the adm group, and then ono.txt, ls l. Well, would you look at that? ono.txt is now using the group adm. And again, we can use this recursively with the hyphen r parameter as well. So let's just set this back to the Joe group. ls hyphen l. And there you go. And by the way, if you don't know what the hyphen l parameter on ls does, I've been using it this whole time. Basically, it just lists it and it gives you also the information about the date modified and everything else. So, you know, the size of the file, the owner of the file, the group, and our all important modification settings. So that's the end of this video. File permissions are a really, really useful thing and you'll probably be using them an awful lot, especially if you are running a server of some kind. You'll be editing a lot and a lot of file permissions. So the recursive parameter may be very useful for you. So that's the end of this video and have a nice day.